The ranges are home to exclusive view that people who call this area home and mountain climbers are privy to. Daniel Gakuo is one such man. An accountant by profession and a pastor of the community, Daniel is a man of many passions, one of which he simply hasn't been able to shake off, even after 36 years. Uh, my name is Daniel Gakuo. Um, I'm located uh, in Nyeri County, Kenya constituency. This place is called Mbaligo, uh, near Indarasha town. It's an area where onions are mostly grown as a catch crop. Uh, currently, uh, my passion is doing lead, lead onion farming. Uh, I've been doing it since 1992. That is when I developed the interest of doing this farming. But this was not my original work. I'm an accountant by profession, uh, and I have tried a lot of many things. And each and every time I got engaged in, the, in these other works or jobs, I later saw myself getting back to the Shaba. So I later decided and so my work is farming. Born and raised in central Kenya, Daniel watched as his dear parents, brimming with energy, worked in their family Shamba for most of his young life. But they were not the only ones. Uh, our parents, they were doing the cultural method of farming. It's not that it was agribusiness. It was this subsistence uh, farming. So I developed an interest when I was even in Standard 4. I had uh, my small shaba where I was doing my farming. And that is when I developed my passion. After high school, things radically changed. His father envisioned another life for his son. He wanted the privileges that came with a white collar job for his son. Each and every time uh, I did accountancy, I went to that to a college because my father wanted me, me to be an accountant. But in myself, I was still feeling that I have my passion is farming. So I just went uh, and did accounts because after, after my high school. And uh, the, the longest duration I've ever been employed in more than 10 different places is nine months. So I kept on changing, on changing, because I wanted my freedom, and I knew that the freedom that I can get is when I'm doing my work. So I later changed and so that the accounting that I've done is to be able to be accountable with my work, and I do my work in an ugly business way. He dabbled in various jobs in the accounting industry until push came to shove. His friends and family could not understand why this successful accountant had decided to quit his job and get into farming. Daniel, however, did not take it to heart. This vision was his, and he would follow it until fruition. I later was a teacher in a certain secondary school in Moranga for five years. I was a basa in another, another secondary school called Darasha High School. I was a basa in another academic, uh, academy. So I've done a lot of jobs. I've been a driver, and uh, most uh, each and every time, I've never been sacked in any job. But I just so I felt the call that I'm being called back to the Shaba. So and when I'm employed, I was employed, I could see that my farming is not going as I would like it to be. Because the person who might be behind that farming is my wife. My passion is not her passion. But later on, I've been able to drive her to liking my passion of farming. And now uh, she acts like my secretary. I normally like doing my th things my own way. I live my own way of uh, style of living. Because one time you see me as a driver, the other time you see me drive, uh, driving a tractor doing my work. The other time you see me digging. The other time you see me doing the spraying with the mist brewer. So I normally like doing things in my own, own unique way. I don't mind about what people say. Because what has derived us from uh, our interest and focus is when you listen to what people will say. Faith is an important part of Daniel's life. Being a firm believer in Christ, he put his faith to test as he started the farm. As a Christian, one thing is, uh, I just went back to the biblical times and I saw that even when Adam and Eve were created, they were put in the Shaba. They were not put in towns. And even the first man to get rich was Isaac, the son of Abraham. And when he, where he did the farming, he, he lived a hundred folds and it was out of season. So I decided that the best work to do and to sweat and to toil and get the results is farming. And it's only the thing that you can do and get the blessings. So biblically, when you go to Cain, when he did not give the, the best things to God, he got a curse. So I decided myself that I will try my God in this work that I do. At least what has guided me and has taken this, me this far 
is the secret of tithing. All this work that I do now here, I will tell my God each and every morning when I start with a prayer, and even my workers have to do it, that if you give me much, you get much. If you, get, you give me less, you get less. And because he's a promising God, I have only seen his heart each and every time. Yeah. Most of what I can say that I started with is, is uh, the subsistence farming, like the potatoes. But later on, when onion farming came, uh, late, uh, the early 1990s, I entered into, I ventured into onion farming because it's the only thing that you can store. You are doing it for cash. So each and every time you, you harvest uh, and the climate here is so suitable uh, with onion farming, we could see with the short rains that we have in October, you could plant and uh, at the end of January and February you, get, you have money. The journey began, it was only a matter of time before Daniel scored his first income from the farm. When 1992, when we are starting, we are starting with at least 250 grams. And that was not even 250 grams, 100 grams was much that time because there are no traders, we are coming for the onions. But later on, as goes, days went, uh, by 1998, I was able to do at least two acres. And that was now history. People had never seen such a big, a large farm. And in that year, that was my turning back because in 1998, I was able to get at least 500,000 from uh, one and a half acres. That was a lot of money. Later on, I, I went back to farming in 1999. There was the Ranina effect. I did three acres. I got a total loss and I ended up being employed in a shaba. But in that shaba, I normally say I had gone for a non job training, training because I could ask for anything that I, that I wanted, any produce that I wanted, any, 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 any entrepreneurship and any management skills I acquired from there. Later on, in, in 2002, I came back to now my farming after getting the capital. Talk about having a big bang. Daniel takes us through the process of starting up the nursery up until the onions start bulbing and the importance of being hands-on. In the nursery, it takes 45 days. So that is one and a half months. When you take it to the shaba, it will take uh, two and a half months. So it's a total of four to five months, then you get uh, your money. The process of the nursery is that when you sow the seeds, it will take at least seven days with the proper management. Because when you are covering the seeds, you have to cover, to cover with a very light soil. And because the soil might be heavy, we normally mix at least uh, some manure, the farm do manure very fine with a light soil. So you cover it with it, you cover with it. You can use a net like the, uh, the one you've seen there, the black net, the shade net, or you can use the glasses for those farmers who cannot be able to attain or to get the nets. It will take uh, at least seven days. You have to water properly in the nurseries. And mostly, I know my farmers that watering should be in the morning, not in the afternoon. Because a plant will need water uh, during the day when it is doing its pro, uh, photosynthesis. It will take, you only have to weed, and that is hard weeding in the nursery, at least two times. Uh, within 45 days, it will have attained a half pencil thickness or pencil thickness. And it will not be so fragile, it is at least be hard because you have to do a process of hardening like two weeks before you start planting. Uh, so that it will be, now when you transplant it, it will be hardy, it will be able to plant, to, to grow and to take off. Onion is the plant that needs a lot, uh, the smallest amount of rain or even water. With the 10 rains, with all 80 big good rains, uh, uh, let's say per week, a rain per week, the onions will grow uh, well. So, in our area, unlike here that we are doing drip irrigation, when we are using the rainy fed, in this Kenny drip street, we, we normally plant our onions in October, when we have the short rains. So we have the rain in October and November and part of December. January is sunny, and that is uh, the warmth that the onion require to bulb. So by February, people are selling. Yeah. So in the Shaba, it will take two, two and a half months. Because now it's agribusiness, at least the first weeding, I do, not, I do the first weeding using herbicides so that I will eliminate, eliminate the cost of uh, the laborers. Because one acre will cost you at least 10 to 12,000 uh, to weed. So the most crucial costing that you have to do, uh, and it's a must to, to do, is planting. Because you have to use at least 10,000 or 12,000 
when we are doing drip irrigation to plant one acre. But now you cut the cost by spraying. You can spray the herbicide for even two times. Like now what you had seen there, I've done for two times. So the weeding and it's just a hard weeding will be done at least once. And the onions will be ready. You cannot be a, a tele farmer. You have to be, to, to be hard on in the shaba. You have to be doing the scouting because when you plant them in the, in the, in the, in the field, they are the cutworms. You have to scout. If you see at least uh, uh, there are cutworms, you have to spray uh, an insecticide. If you see the weeds that are growing, needs uh, at least a level where you can spray, you need to spray. I have to supervise spraying or I have to do it physically myself. I have to, to see the intensity of the, 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 the pests that are, are, are destroying, like the drips, which is a major threat. I have to know the, how to change the chemicals the chemical ingredients of the different chemicals that I'm using. If I use this, 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 that, this time, uh, before the caterpillar or the leaves develop a resistance, I will go to another active ingredient. Because if you are able to tame the leaves, and it's a major threat in onion farming, if you are able to, to tame them from the nursery, and in the shaba, you are through. The other thing is the weeding. Onions uh, are bulbs. It is not a root tuber. So you do not come and start healing like you are doing for tattoos. So it's something light. You remove, if there are, there are no weeds, there is no need of even weeding. Because we normally say, and in onion farming is, we all drain the fertile soils. So if the fertiles are, so, uh, the soils are fertile, the rooting system will go far and deep. And if the, fat, the, the soil has a fertility, the water retention is good. And if we have drained, even if it has a lot of rain, uh, the drainage is okay, and so the, uh, the, the onions will do it. Because the major disease that we have for onions is uh, downy mildew and purple brush. Mostly they will be brought by overclouding or soggy soils or damp soils, or when you have a lot of weeds in the shaba. So proper farm hygiene has to be there, free of weeds. And when you have the free of weeds, you have free from pests and from all these diseases. For onions to grow, yeah, uh, in the second or uh, third months, it will start bulbing. That time, you have to know the type of fertilizer to use. To plant, you need the phosphorus. To top dress, you need the CN, because phosphorus you help us in root establishment. And when the roots have been established, then we need the leaves. The leaves to cook for the, the food, we need the nitrogen. You put the nitrogen. Then after the nitrogen, you tell the plant, because it's a living thing, you have to talk with it. Now that I have put you phosphorus, you have the roots. I have to put you, then uh, given you the CN, you have the leaves. Now I want you to cook. So you put a lot of potassium, and that is triple K, the secret of dressing. You tell it, now I want you to bulb. Uh, one thing I know is you have to have passion. You should not say that you want to be a farmer, and yet you want to be a, a tele farmer. You'll be staying in town, ask, uh, just calling and asking how it is being done. You'll be told that it has been sprayed, you'll be told it has been watered, and nothing, nothing has been done. So you have to have uh, a closer monitoring. Like me, when I come to this chamber, myself is, you only see me moving around. I know I tell them I manage by a system called Yumbwa, managing by walking around. I just walk around, taking notes, and then, delegating and saying this portion I wanted to be done this way. So and I like working with amateurs. Not people who are from, from college. Those people from who are from college, uh, it's not that I'm saying they are bad, but they have the paper. They have the papers. You need I need somebody who is practically able to need to, to, to change. If you tell him uh, this watering is for this, this system is for this. So I like wo working with amateurs. Not even those people who are on it. So I will tell these people First of all, get the passion, and the factors for production are one, lad. Then you have the capital, entrepreneurship, so you have to be there. Then these others will follow, marketing will follow, all these others will follow. Traditionally, organic farming has been the method farmers have used to rely on their produce. Daniel shares his take on organic farming and why all the fertilizers we need are in our homesteads. I've been doing organic farming, and uh, it's because Currently, we are having this problem of uh, lifestyle diseases, what we are eating, the, what, how we are doing things, the cancers, we are being told about, it's about the chemicals. So I decided myself, I will not be eating uh, chemicals, and I will not be giving other people chemicals. So I've been doing uh, even garlic farming here, being organic, 
I've been doing potato farming in this Chaba, being organic, and you've been bought by, I've seen, and people in this area have seen something very different. Lorries coming from Nairobi and buying potatoes using cages. It's a big challenge of this area because it's a potato pro, uh, uh, growing county. And there is these weights, these big bags. But to me, the potatoes that I normally grow here, the, 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 the companies come from Nairobi, we weigh in cages and put in crates. It was something interesting. People were not breathing it, and just because it was organic. The organic market is so, so big that we cannot be able to meet the neighbor, the demand. Or those people who know their lives are at what, depend on what they eat. When you go back to our shabas and to our homesteads, there is the cow bomber where it used to be. Since time immemorial, the weeds that have been growing there are so green. Even the potatoes, when they grow there, they are green. They are evergreen. If you go to the forests that have not been damaged by these chemicals, you not see the, the diseases that we have in the Shabbos. You not see the erosions that we have in the Shabbos. Because now our soils are dead, most of the soils are dead. We have at least to recondition these soils to be as productive as they are. By just putting manure, the cow dung manure, these manures, these are one way, well, that is one way of farming organically. Uh, the, other, the other thing that we normally spray and use as, uh, as, as foliar feed is these weeds that we collect from the shabba are given so, some worms. There is a technology that is done by a certain uh, Dr. Mwagi. He's called Dr. Mwagi. He's a good friend of mine. And we have done and we have moved farmers uh, very much. There is a portion, there is a place that we did uh, maize, maize farming. Uh, and you see that the height of the maize stock is at least even 12, meter, 12 feet high and it's getting at least six, six maize cobs or more you, you just by just using that organic uh, material. So I have the conditioner that I normally spray the soil to condition the soil. I have the fertilizer, the foliar, the, the foliar fertilizer that is invisible for maize. There are these worms that, uh, worms that are given the weeds. The byproducts is what you use now as the foliar. Uh, and still we have the soil conditioner, we are using uh, molasses to condition the soil. And later on, after using this, uh, these products, you can see the worms that you used to see in the shaba moving. You can see the red bars that you used to see. You can see the frogs that you used to see. And even the, the ecosystem, the, 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 the habitats that used to be here, you see them. And the, the, the atmosphere is good. The atmosphere is good. So I want to draw so, so much in that uh, organic farming because it has his own person, uh, that Dr. Morgan, he normally does it. But it has proved to be a solution. If you eat a potato that has been done using organic farming, you, you notice the difference. It is the potato that you used to eat in the early 70s.